Mr. Speaker, I yield uh, two minutes to the gentleman from Ohio, Mr. Kucinich. I would beg the recognized for two minutes. I would beg the my, the part of the distinguished general lady from Texas, because there are those of us who oppose this bill in principle, and we believe we're fighting for justice as well. I want to state that if you believe the war should end, then at least believe we should limit it today. And that's what Mr. Rooney does. I oppose this war. It's unconstitutional. It's in violation of statute. And there's a two-step way to end the war. Vote for Rooney, step one, and the Kucinich Amash Amendment, which limit, which uh, defunds the DOD bill. You can do that when we come back. But to, to claim that the Arab League is somehow asking for us to continue this attack on Libya is plain false. The fact of the matter is we have uh, Al Jazeera reporting that Italy's foreign minister and the outgoing head of the Arab League have each called for a halt to hostilities in Libya, that it was reported that Amir, uh, Amir Musa, uh, two days ago, he's the outgoing head of the Arab League, he said now is the time to do whatever we can to reach a political solution. And that has to start with a genuine ceasefire under international supervision. So you don't have the Arab League's head here saying, oh yeah, America, come on, go for it, prosecute the war, bomb Libya. No, they're not saying that at all. We've got to be very clear about that. Even China who's eating our lunch financially, they're not involved in this war. They're saying there ought to be a political solution. That from the Chinese minister two days ago. We've got to be careful about our intentions here. And our intention should be to end this war, and we can do it with Rooney's uh, uh, bill. The resolution isn't perfect. It doesn't end the war in its entirety immediately. It, but it does make clear that the United States will not take over the war as European support continues to diminish. You know, the, the, the Kucinich Amash Amendment is complimentary. We want to end U.S. involvement in the war in Libya. We can do it in two steps. Vote yes for Mr. Rooney's uh, bill, which ends direct hostilities immediately, and support Kucinich Amash when it comes up in two weeks. I yield back. The gentleman's time has expired. The gentleman from Washington. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I yield three minutes to the gentlelady from Ohio, Ms. Kaptur. The gentlelady from Ohio is recognized for three minutes. Thank you. I thank uh, uh, Ranking Member Smith for yielding me the time and asked unanimous consent to place extraneous materials in the record. Without um, objection. I rise in support of this bill as the prior resolution is better late than never. Here again with Libya, Congress follows in the wake of major executive branch military action absent congressional authorization. I sent a letter to President Obama on March 22nd for, uh, regarding uh, what was then called Operation Morning Dawn and have never gotten an answer. Uh, when one looks at the duration of U.S. military engagements in the Middle East, North Africa, and Central Asia, and what the future might bring, these are the longest wars and military actions in U.S. history. Our nation has fallen into deep debt directly, connected to our expenditures of over a trillion dollars in the past decade on wars that have not been paid for. And creeping defense commitments in that region and globally now consume over half the U.S. discretionary budget annually. It is an astounding predicament 20 years after the end of the Cold War. As jobless Americans question whether our federal government even sees their plight. We all know freedom is not free, but it is largely the American people that are bearing this military burden more and more each year. What is most striking is that other nations in the region in which we are fighting are simply not carrying anywhere near their fair share of the load of boots on the ground, nor have they measured up either in terms of putting their treasuries at risk. Unless an alliance of nations in that region fight for freedom themselves, they won't own it and we can't transfuse it. Sadly, compared to the moral justification for World War II, which historians termed Americans' most just foreign war, our nation in the current period is drawn into resource wars in far-flung places that history is likely to judge as morally indefensible. The world is full of bad dictators, but it always seems the dictators America is most interested in are those that sit atop huge oil reserves. Libya has the world's ninth largest oil reserves and exports 1.5 million barrels a day. I'll be placing several articles in the record that document West Europe's dependence as well as Canada's reliance on Libya's oil investments and the Libyan president's threats to nationalize those investments, which even has affected China. The West's utter and growing reliance on imported petroleum has twisted our foreign policy and crippled our domestic economy time and again. 
as we import half of what we consume. Until Americans clearly see our predicament, our nation will keep repeating these same mistakes. Let us be clear on the nature of the Libyan economy. Ninety-five percent of its exports are oil. Eighty percent of its government revenue derives from oil sales. Oil represents 25 percent of Libya's GDP and its most important industry. And Libya is Africa's third largest oil producer. The major powers involved in this military operation have vast pecuniary interests at stake for the multinational oil corporations that operate in Libya, whether it is Italy, from which operations are being staged and which gets 22 percent of its oil from Libyan operations through firms like Eni and Repsol, or Canada, whose NATO general is leading operations, while, Canadians, while Canada's second largest corporation, Suncor Energy, has major oil operations in Libya. Might I have an additional 15 seconds, please? Please. I yield the gentlelady an additional gentle 15 seconds. Recognize. I appreciate that. An article I am submitting for the record reports that Saif al Ilan Qaddafi, the son of Colonel Qaddafi, warned that in the event of a civil war, Libya's oil wealth would be burned. One can see why the global powers took note. In fact, China lifted 55,000 of its oil workers out of Libya. History will judge whether these resource wars and selective dictator disposals are justifiable, but the answer for America is to invest here at home and to restore America's energy independence and to extricate ourselves from all these foreign oil involvements. I yield back my remaining General time. General Lady's time has expired. The gentleman from Florida. Mr. Speaker, I yield two minutes to my friend and colleague, the Chairman of the Subcommittee on Strategic Forces, the gentleman from Ohio, Mr. Turner. The gentleman from Ohio is recognized for two minutes. Thank you, Mr. Rooney. I appreciate uh, the time and also uh, your advancing this resolution. Uh, the President has not made the case for committing our military to the conflict in Libya. The President claims that these military actions do not constitute hostilities. However, the American people know otherwise. The President is engaged in military action against Libya and the Qaddafi regime without congressional approval. In addition to ignoring Congress, many believe that the President has exceeded the scope of the UN Security Council resolution imposing an embargo, a no-fly zone, and authorizing civil protection of the Libyan people. The President has told us who we're against, Qaddafi, but he cannot tell us who we are for. Secretary Gates has indicated that we know little about the opposition or rebels. We do not know their geopolitical view towards their neighbors or us. We do not know their commitment to domestic diversity. Are we going to have atrocities? We do not know their ideology <clears throat> or their preferred form of government or if they have a commitment to non-proliferation of weapons of mass destruction, an issue that is incredibly important in the area of Libya. <clears throat> the President has used the United Nations' approval of civil protection to wage an all-out war on Qaddafi without congressional approval or American support. U.S. Admiral Locklear, in charge of the NATO operations against Libya, recently stated that ground troops would be needed to provide stability in Libya once the Qaddafi regime falls. And yet, the President has not provided us any information about what a post-Qaddafi Libya will look like or what will be our involvement. He is committing us to an extended military action, and for Congress to be relevant, the voices of this body need to be heard. I support the passage of Mr. Rooney's resolution limiting the use of funds appropriated in the DOD in support of U.S. activities in Libya unless otherwise authorized by law. This passage of this resolution is an important step to limit the role of the U.S. military. I urge passage of H.R. Res. 2278. Yield back. Gentleman yields back his time. Gentleman from Washington. Thank